Eva. Cut it out, do you hear? Can you understand English? Can you? Yes. What's your name? Real. What's the rest of it? McDonald. McDonald. Where'd you come from? What do you care? Where'd you live before you came here? Cora. McDonald. Oh, yeah. Who was he? My brother. You say you did hit him with the pitchfork? Yep. Wow. Now, was that Howard Hawks directed that? Yes. That was the test. Was How the did that scene test. go eventually then? Was it redone with Hughes? Yes, it was redone, but Howard was sick that day, Howard Hughes, and so the writer just let us do exactly what Hawks had done, and that's one of the, one of the only natural shots in it of Jack and myself. Well, I thought it looked, looked good to me, especially for people. Had Jack done much acting before no. that time? You're just total beginners. Yeah. Now, what started the big furor with the censors? Scenes like that, or was it all the publicity stills and the yeah. low-cut Blouse. I think it was the publicity stills, and there was one place where Billy is uh, shot, and he's in the bed, and I reached over and pulled the covers up, and I had a low-cut blouse on, mm -hmm. and the camera was right across the bed, and uh, Greg Tolan was the cameraman, and he said, we'll have to redo that, so he changed the angle, but when Hughes saw that shot, he wanted to keep it in the picture. And, and Hayes' furor. office said no, and he said yes, and he's very stubborn. Is it true that Hughes designed a, a special bra for you? That's he designed one, but I never wore it. Why did you not wear it? Just didn't work? It was ridiculous. <laughs> it's like an airplane? or <laughs> Well, he was trying to get a seamless bra. Oh, he's ahead and, of his time. Uh, yeah, he was. And, uh, but it, you know, it wasn't working at the moment, and so I just threw it under the bed and put some Kleenex over my own bra and went out. He never knew that? Never knew the difference. He wasn't an absolute perfectionist. <laughs> <laughs> well, as you can see, Jane Russell, is, Jane Russell is with us tonight. Now, if you have comments or questions for her about her career, her family, we're going to talk more about her family and her outlook and her work. As you know, she uh, developed the organization WAIF. Any questions at all, call us here in Detroit. We're live at 313-872-4040. Now, of course, during high school years, you had met, as you call him, Robert Waterfield. And of course, everybody knew him as Bob Waterfield, I guess, in the yeah. sports world. And you were enamored of him from, I guess, the first time you met him. Yeah, actually, the, the very first time I met him, he was uh, teaching me to dive. And I think I was about a hot 14. I'm oh. sure he doesn't even remember that. Oh. And then things but progressed. And actually, your marriage then lasted, what, about 23 years? 23 years. Did you know when you first married, of course, when you first married, you weren't aware that you and he could not have children, right? No. So was it difficult talking him into adopting? Yes, a little bit, because I came from a large family and he was an only child. Oh. And I, you know, he was a little leery, but uh, I had lots of faith that it would work out. And uh, then he became a terrific father. Speaking of faith, too, uh, seemingly your faith in your early years somewhat wavered. Is that true? Yeah. For about two years, I uh, began to think that, uh, oh, maybe that was my mother's crutch, and maybe all these Bible stories we'd heard were made up, and maybe um, did it, anything you did was perfectly okay as long as it didn't hurt somebody else. Mm -hmm. So you got into that way of thinking. And, uh, yeah, it was popular at the time. Still popular now with some people. I suppose, <laughs> at the time, right. you know. Now your and mom was very religious, right? Well, she wasn't religious because I, to me, yeah, she, was a, she had fabulous faith. Mm -hmm. And she knew that the Lord would, you know, she just said, she the, Lord, the Lord will go with you, you know. When did your faith become really strong? What period of your life? When it well, started. it really was when I was young, and then it was all this uh, highfalutin thinking, you know. And uh, then I found myself very, very sick for the first time in my life, doing uh, 
what I wanted to do as long as it didn't hurt anybody else. And of course, that's ridiculous because it always does hurt somebody else and yourself. Was that part of the Hollywood scene? Did that get you in, I mean, the parties, the, the glamour, the celebrity? No, it was really more uh, the philosophical thing that the high school group were going through. Well, you and your, your girlfriends, you had some really yeah. good friends in high school yeah. out in Van Nuys. Van Nuys has really changed, hasn't it? Yes, it certainly has. <laughs> sure has, and where you used yeah. to live out in the valley used to be farm country, right? Yeah. Well, let's take a peek at some other scenes. You worked with, of course, some of the biggest people in the business, uh, one being Bob Hope, of course, Marilyn Monroe. So we're going to take a peek again, and maybe you can make some comments on their personalities, how they were to work with. Oh, there's, Bob. there's Robert the Hope. And th that's not a posed picture. He was funny all the time. Right, and that was in Pale Face or Son of Pale Face? That was Son of Pale Face, okay. because I was singing. Uh, there's old Clark Gable, and we're in Mexico doing Tall Men, and he was the biggest tease that ever walked. There's old John Peoples. That's my husband. Right. <laughs> he evidently... Uh, I didn't know they were going to pop that one on. I didn't know that either, and there you are with Marilyn Monroe. And there's with the Blondel. Was she good to work with? Yes, very good. She, How would you describe her personality? Marilyn is very shy. She was uh, a very hard worker. Mm-hmm and uh, bound and determined to get ahead. What do you think when you hear these stories now, even, uh, even tonight's news I was hearing, uh, was, I guess it was entertainment tonight, they're still trying to figure out what happened, circumstances around her death. Do you think it's better left alone or? Oh, when are they gonna let the poor girl go, you know? Is that your feeling about the, about the books written about people? Uh, Absolutely, being Absolutely, my God, if I was dead, I'd want to just be, just go on. Mm -hmm. Some of the other people you worked with, uh, Vincent Price, Gilbert Rowland, Robert Mitchum. Who was your favorite, really? I, of course, you must have had some. That's impossible. You know, you can't pick a, a favorite between all those neat guys. And then there was Jeff Chandler and... Richard Egan. Richard Egan, I adore. Yeah. You used yeah. to kid him about it. Of course, you said you'd... You were destined to be married. You felt you were always married because you were the marrying type, yeah. yet he held off a long time before he got married, right? Yeah, and I nagged him for years, and he find, and I finally got to go to his wedding. You said, it, of course, his brother being a priest, you said in the same kind of voice, you said it sounded like he was marrying himself. Exactly. <laughs> they had identical voices, gorgeous voice. Now, after the outlaw and when things started, <clears throat> excuse me, to, to progress in your career, seemingly they did progress without you doing a lot of hard work, if you don't mind me saying that, right? Well, I, the work was hard enough while we were doing it, but I, um, I was under contract and it just kept rolling along and I kept getting what I considered pretty much B pictures, but uh, they doctor them up and at least the ones at RKO, the best ones I made were off the RKO lot. Mm -hmm. And you were, uh, that was when uh, Hughes owned RKO. Yeah. Right? It was kind of like a family, you said. Yes. You had always your own, but eventually your hairdresser and your makeup person, all that family you would take and to I other studios. And took them with me wherever we went. We had a great time. Did you ever feel that you got into that kind of star complex, thinking of yourself as a star? No. I thought of myself as a working girl. And I had a lot of help, and uh, we were we were a team, and we made it work, and we could get dressed and on the set quicker than anybody any other team. And you have things in here about how you had your own routine, so you could get there a little later and still be on the oh, set yeah. on time, get a little extra sleep. Absolutely. Okay. Well, it's time to see what you're thinking out there, and knowing you, you've got a lot of thoughts. We'll take your calls coming up next on Late Night America. Jane Russell, actually reminiscing about names in Hollywood uh, out in the valley. Let's take some calls. Hello, you're on Late Night America. Well, hello there. This is Demita from Houston, Texas. Hi. And I have a question for Jane Russell. Okay, go right ahead. Yeah. Do you feel that you were actually a beautiful sex symbol that you were in your time period being in B-films? I thought the whole thing was a big joke. <laughs> If you look at most of those pictures, I was, especially if I was looking sideways, I was usually looking cross-eyed or making some kind of a fun, 
I thought they were funny. When you had uh, eventually then a pick of some of the photographers and you made sure that uh, after you became knowledgeable that they didn't go too far in posing you, right? Oh, that was at the very beginning. They took a lot of uh, bad shots, you know, just bad angles. Come and pick up the pails, you know, little girl. And uh -huh. when I got home, I saw them all over the covers of magazines and inside and everything. And Tom Kelly would never have done anything like that. Did your mom make remarks? Because you were still a young woman then. Did she say anything? Yeah, she was very unhappy about it, but so was I. The whole family were. But uh, from then on, I just watched photographers, and I learned to take care of myself, and they never got any more. Okay. Hello, you're on Late Night America. Yes, this is Perry from College Park, Georgia. Hi, Perry. Love Jane Russell. And I just wanted to know, what was her favorite movie to do? Oh, Gentlemen Prefer Blondes, definitely. Good, good question. I guess you get asked that a lot. You enjoy yeah. doing musicals because, of course, you did a lot of singing. Yeah, and I got to work with Howard Hawks and mm -hmm. with Jack Cole, who uh, I think was an absolute genius. I adored him. Made and I just work. think it was the most professionally done all around, and, uh, and I liked the part I had. Mm -hmm. Hello, you're on Late Night America. Yes, this is Gerard from Michigan. Hi, Gerard. Uh, I was wondering, Miss Russell, if you could... Um, uh, explain uh, your situation with um, Howard Hughes and uh, working with the man and also what was your most rewarding experience and your worst experience <laughs> okay wow nice. that's a big Howard order. Hughes and the best and the worst <laughs> uh, there was no romance with Howard he was my boss and uh, I thought of him kind of like a Texas cousin he was uh, very sweet and very shy and considerate and also very stubborn and uh, he um, well eccentric even when he was young right yeah but it was kind of uh, mm, I don't know it seems so <laughs> perfectly normal the way he was for him yes well for for most people he just didn't like to have a big fuss and he didn't like to go to cocktail parties or anything like that he was a very serious guy and he had a lot of a lot of work to do he did make one pass at you though right oh yeah but that was uh, that's in the book yeah <laughs> <laughs> now uh, getting back to Gerard's question the most rewarding experience and the most disappointing with uh, Howard Hughes I don't think he meant or it that way, just in just general. Just in my life? Oh, heavens. I guess the most rewarding was uh, getting my children. They're adopted, and I looked for them for a long time. They're all foreign children, right? All from no. Ireland? No. Not all of them? No, no. They're two from, Tracy. Two from the States, and uh, Tracy and Buck were from the States, and Thomas was from England. From he was Irish. Irish. Yeah. And uh, the most terrible was either getting divorced or when Roger died, my second husband. You don't even married three months? Yes. Right. yes. Hello, you're on Late Night America. Yes, this is John from Fort Wayne, Indiana. Hi, John. Jane, I just want to know if you had your life to live over again, is there anything that you would change? And are you happy now? Oh, yeah, I'm very happy now. I uh, would like to have done some more well, more dramatic parts with a little more meaning in them instead of being the girl in the piece. Did you try to do that during your career, but they wouldn't accept you that way? There, no, it was just that there was nothing I, I could do about it. The uh, people that were running the studio just picked the scripts, and you either did it or you went on suspension. And uh, I don't know, you know, like Bob Mitchum. He got to do some wonderful things when he finally got away from the studio. Mm -hmm. Only after that. Yeah. Hello, you're on Late Night America. Yes, I have a question for Jane Russell. This is Don from Houston, Texas. Hi, Don. And um, I've, she's been my favorite movie star all of my life. And I just, uh, one of the best movies I've ever seen uh, was her and Red Skelton. And, and the only thing I can remember is Buttons and Bow. No, that was Bob Hope, you mean. 
Uh, with yeah. Oh, that Yep, and it was Pale Face. Right, okay. I so you were looking at her all the time. That's why you didn't even know who <laughs> else it was. She's just as pretty now as she ever was, and I, I just really like her. Well, aren't you a darling? That's nice. <laughs> friendly people in Houston. Now, you mentioned you're adopting your children. Was that, how soon after that did you get the idea for WAIF? Which, of course, at that time, was, you set it up with the uh, International Social Service as the adoptive division, right? Adoption. Yeah, division. it was in looking for my children that I got to see. I used the red carpet, and I got into a lot of orphanages that were very difficult to get in in those days. And it, they were in other countries. And I saw lots of children that I knew needed adopting and would never be adopted in their own country because it just wasn't done. Mm -hmm. And I also knew what it was like to be a parent looking, you know, for children. I knew how many people there were in the states that wanted them. So in the beginning, we, I just thought these two needs should be gotten together. Who helped you at the beginning as in fundraising some of your different um, friends? Marilyn Hinton and Vicki Rosenberg. Her husband was the producer, um, Aaron Rosenberg, oh, yeah. and uh, Adrian Bryan and David Bryan that were David Bryan the actor oh, sure. and Adrian Booth sure. was an actress mm -hmm. and uh, oh there were a lot of wonderful people. Of course you raised an enormous amount of money over the years. You're still very active in it to your yeah. board of directors? Yeah. Okay. Later on we're going to give you an address too for WAIF if you'd like to get We uh, We don't place children from overseas anymore. Well, it's now every, hard to place children in every, this? Yeah. It's hard to place children in the United States. How many would you place in a year would WAIF place in an average year? You know? Oh I don't know. There's been 38,000 altogether. Wow. Doesn't that, that give you a lot of good yeah. feeling, I'll bet. You bet. Mm. Hello, you're on Late Night America. Yes, hello, my name's Elizabeth. I'm calling from Farmington Hills, Michigan. Hi. And first of all, I have to say that I think Jane Russell's fantastic. The, uh, and you've been, I've been your favorite, and I'm only 36 years old, and I've watched the movies for years and loved them. The thing I have to ask you is I understand you've had a problem with alcohol, and that you've overcome that. What can you tell us about that? Well, let's see, Robert Waterfield and I both drank um, from the time we were about 18 years old. And it was a, just a way of life. It was uh, social drinking. And then there came a time when I just couldn't handle it anymore. I ended up drunk or uh, couldn't remember what had happened the day before or the night before. And um, I knew that I absolutely had to quit. You do a few humiliating things and uh, you, you get the message and uh, I did not go to AA or anything because uh, I'm pretty stubborn and uh, if somebody tells me I can't do something that's exactly what I'm going to do. How many times did you try to give up and fail before you finally succeeded? Uh, actually when I really made my mind up that was the end of it. Mm -hmm. But that's the hard part, you know, because you want to think, well, I've done it all these years and I want to have a drink at five o'clock or I don't want to go to a party and just drink Coke or something. And uh, that's the hard part, just making up your mind. Yeah, you said the time between five and seven in the evening used to be the hardest time. Yeah. Of course, that led to actually an affair, didn't it? That, yeah. That time with uh, sure. Dan. One thing I want to ask you, and of course, obviously you don't have to answer it, but you, you really leveled in here a lot of good and a lot of bad and everything. You named names and everything, except one person whom you call Lance. You just didn't name him. Is that because he's some very well-known person? There's some other people I didn't name in there that have other names. Okay. Cause I, I didn't see any point in, you know, causing anybody else any problems. Mm -hmm. uh, they were my problems. and. Actually, John, I feel that the Lord is the hero of this book, and the only reason I went into all those dark corners was because if I wanted to show how the Lord can work in a life and how much He really loves us, then I had to subjectively take you with me into those dark corners. Yeah, I think uh, certainly the thing that I got most out of this is that you feel the Lord is, is certainly forgiving. Absolutely. And uh, he has a way of, uh, without you knowing it, of leading you certain ways. Yeah. And, and always helping you come back. Absolutely. Hello, you're on Late Night America. Yes, my name is Evelyn from Atlanta, Georgia. Uh-huh. And I wanted to ask Jane Russell, if she had not become an actress, what would you have done with your life? Okay. <laughs> Thank you. 
Well, I knew I had to do something in art, music, or drama because I was so terrible at math and science that uh, you'd have to forget about the whole thing. <laughs> so uh, I think I would have been in designing. In fact, I still do designing all you the do time. You do some painting, though, too, don't you? I do painting, and uh, I love designing houses and clothes. You have designed for your brothers, right? Or yeah, I right? did for my brothers, and we've built. John and I have built several houses. Are you living? Do you have residences in both Arizona and, and California, or do you live both? Yes. Okay. Santa Barbara's a gorgeous area. Yeah. Hello, you're on Late Night America. Hi, um, this is Bonnie from Washington D.C. Hi, Bonnie. Two questions, please. First of all, what made you take that uh, job on the Yellow Rose? I loved you. As Chance's mother, I was very upset. But they took it off, let me tell you. Loved your hair, dude. My other question is this really big question. You and Robert Mitchum, his kind of woman, you were sexy. I don't care. I know he's a big redneck, but I love the man. <laughs> 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 she ought to get her own show. That's oh, good. Uh, I, Yellow Rose, did you enjoy that? Of course, you hadn't worked what, since, or taken the job. I'm sure you'd been offered one since 70, and then you came back in 83. Yeah, I had, well, when I married John, he went on the road with me doing a play for five and a half months, and he said at the end of it, he said, uh, if you don't want to work again, you don't ever have to. Hmm. And I thought that was great, so I quit, and I didn't work for 10 years. And then... Uh, they offered me the Yellow Rose, and it was a good part, and I liked it. Good cast, so, uh, too. Yeah. And I loved working with Sam Elliott. I, I remember watching Sam from way back. He, I remembered things that he'd done he couldn't believe. I is even there? knew it was him. Yeah, he's you know. a good actor. He is. Yes. And David Soul's a doll. Now, uh, she had mentioned, uh, too, about Robert Mitchum. Yeah. He, of course, he's got quite a reputation, but he's a very bright, sensitive guy. Robert Mitchum is, that's all an act, that Peck's bad boy that he puts on. He only does that for the visitors when they come on the set. He is a darling to work with. He said he's pretty protective of you when very, you first met. Yes. Yeah. Hello, you're on Late Night America. Hello, my name is Gloria. I'm from Newport Richie, Florida. Hi, and Gloria. I would like to know if we would have the privilege of seeing Miss Russell and television in the near future. Okay, yes, what are your... I have no plans at all. Would you like to? I mean, you, obviously you don't have to work, but would it be fun to take... Uh... If I had a really good part and I didn't have to be in it every week, mm -hmm. you know, that's one of the reasons I thought of Yellow Rose. I wouldn't have to be there all the time, but I think Yellow Rose was on its way out when I joined them. <laughs> on your no, way in, it was on its way Unfortunately. <laughs> Hello, you're on Late Night America. Okay, my name is Samantha. I'm from Houston, Texas. Hi. And I would like to compliment Miss Russell. And she is a lady. And I would like to thank her very much for her courage and for everything that she has stood for. And she's not afraid to say, hey, I made a mistake. And because of her, I no longer drink and I'm no longer on drugs. Miss Russell, thank you for my life. Good, and thanks. thank you for my, my family's word. life. And I love you. Praise the Lord. Isn't that nice to hear that from people? You bet. Hmm. I'll have to read the book. Uh, before we go too much further, too, and, and wrap up, I want to ask you just update people on your kids, Tracy and Thomas and Buck. Well, Thomas is a, he's a wonderful musician. He's a jazz rock singer. Mm. and plays guitar and can play drums, and he lives in Sedona. Tracy, my daughter, is married and has a six-year-old son, Jamie, that's the eyes in my head, and she also has twin daughters that are two. Oh, boy. And Buck? Buck just married a girl who has a nine-year-old boy and twin daughters that are four. So I have two sets of twin granddaughters. You're getting kids. You just yeah. have to have kids around here. Right? <laughs> right. Well, we wish you well. I want to remind everybody of the book, too. But And uh, you and John Peebles now have been married a considerable length of time. Eleven years. Oh, he treats you the way you want to be treated? Yeah. Uh, he's a big, tough old Texan. Yeah, he knows what he's doing. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I want to remind you of the address, too. WAIF, of course, W-A-I-F, 67 Irving Place. That's I-R-V-I-N-G Place, New York, New York, 10003. And a sincere thank you to Jane Russell, her autobiography, My Path and My Detours, published by Franklin Watts. And when we come back on Late Night America, Jerry Kramer recounts the emotional reunion of the 67 Super Bowl champion Green Bay Packers, how the legends are faring as mere mortal aging men away from the cheering crowds. We'll be back.
On Wednesday, Victor Ruther talks about the UAW and his brother Walter, and New York Times nutrition writer Jane Brody. Thursday, an attorney for abused children gives a 10-point system for stopping child abuse, and rock journalist Dave Marsh critiques the music industry. And then on Friday, a documentary filmmaker looks at America's most famous symbol, the Statue of Liberty, and are women being left out of the technological revolution?